Hello, and welcome to my Let's Play on Battle Brothers. The full release, as you can see in the bottom right -hand corner here, version 1.0.0.1. That is significant because this game has been in early access for a while. I think about a year, maybe a year and a half or so, maybe even two years. Who knows? I sure don't, because I just made up things. Anyway, um, very excited to play this game. I have actually played it before on my channel as well, but I figured I wanted to redo... Uh, my let's play on it when the full game was released, so I waited for that. Uh, very excited to play it. I've been keeping an eye on this game ever since I found out about it, really. Um, that's when I first started playing it, and then ever since then I've, I've been watching videos and just been very interested in this game. It just, it, I don't know, it's a, it's a piece of art, this thing. Um, also, it's just, it's magnificent that they actually released it, because there's so many games in early access on Steam that just never get released nowadays, it's crazy. Or never even get updates anymore. They've been very, very active with the updates and making videos about them too themselves on, on their own YouTube channel. But anyway, without any further ado, actually one more ado. Let's uh, get that out of the way. If you want a mercenary in my company, you will have to join my Discord channel. A link to which is in the description. Um, where you can leave uh, a name and a title for your character. So I won't be taking any from the comments. Uh, because it'd be a good idea, just a good way to get you guys to join my Discord channel. Um, I am prioritizing my patrons though, uh, but I will still take any any names uh, for mercenaries that I have left after them. So, anyway, without any further ado this time, let's jump into the campaign. I've already set this up because I figured why not. Our company name is going to be the Band of Donkeys. I'm going to play on veteran difficulty because I don't want... Uh, it's a nice, it's a balanced, that's what it says, it's a balanced playing experience, which I like. Uh, beginner gives you more starting funds, lower prices, etc. Expert gives you less starting funds, more challenging contracts, etc. I want a balanced um, experience, which is good. Late game crisis, I am going to leave it on random. Uh, basically, this is something that happens after like 80 days or so just to mix things up a little bit. You can have either a, uh, a faction war between the noble houses, a green skin invasion, or an undead scourge happen first. No matter which one you choose, though, the other ones will appear later as well. It's just that you choose which one goes first. But I'm just gonna leave it on random. And then there's the banner. I've chosen that one. I will quickly go through them though, just in case you are interested. Um, there's unfortunately not a donkey banner which uh, makes the game that much worse in my opinion, unfortunately, but I'll just take this one because it has like a band there. It's a crown, I know, but it's like a band. So, there's that. Let's start the campaign. The last battle. It all went wrong. Two days ago, the company was hired to track down Hoggard the Weasel and his band of raiders. But it was them who found you first. An ambush. Some joke about horses, cut short by an arrow to the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream, a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of your men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A hurried glance sees the men charge about you to make a valiant last stand. Met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain. A last nod before his throat is cut. You are left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword and with all the will you can muster, you slowly rise again. To the end! That's how our character sounds. To the end now, men! Go, go! There goes one of our guys. And there goes the other. Beautiful. And there, Hoggard, the weasel, weaseling away. Right, so here we are in the game. I'm going to approach this, uh, assuming you guys don't know exactly what's going on, but have like an idea of how games like this work. So I will be going over things to some extent, but not a whole lot. Anyway, so first of all, we have three characters, uh, currently called Kunold, Rambert, and Jost. I'm going to be renaming them once we get to the campaign map. Currently, I can't do it. Um, Kunold, who's acting right now, is an archer, or a crossbowman, uh, as he, he wields a crossbow. And it's ten, technically crossbowmen, they, they wield crossbows, not, not bows. Anyway, he's a ranged character. Um, and uh, with a crossbow, you currently only have a single ability, which is shoot bolt. Only costs 2 AP, it builds up 5 fatigue, which is not very uh, intensive at all. You have 9... AP, and you, this this particular guy has 85 fatigue. All the characters have 9 AP, though. However, the reload is what is very uh, intensive, heavy, 
um, or fatigue heavy. So we can shoot a bolt for only 2 AP, but when we have to reload it, it costs 7, which takes up all remaining AP. So you can't do anything besides shooting and reloading, or you could shoot and then move, but you can't reload. Anyway, we currently um, have a, a decent shot at this Brigand Thug. He's got a 57% chance today. We can actually have a look at their range skill. 48, it's not terrible. He also has a... We'll go over this in more detail in a bit, little bit, but every one of these guys has the background uh, companion. Um, but we also have some special traits, or some of them do. He has a 90% chance to survive if struck down and not killed by a, a fatally... I think that, that might be a bug or something. I'm pretty sure that sentence isn't finished. But anyway, he, he has a good chance of surviving. Uh, wait, hold on. Does it say fatality? Oh, it does say fatality. Never mind. That's the full sentence. I was wrong. Anyway. Um, so we have a chance to hit either one of these. We've got a 57% chance to hit this man, or a 51% chance to hit this man. I'm actually almost inclined to hit him, because he has a two-handed axe, which is a lot more dangerous of a weapon than the, the little billy club this man has. So I'm going to try and shoot him. We actually got a hit on him. We also pierced his shoulder, or he has an injured shoulder, which uh, probably reduces his chance to hit... Which is quite good. We can reload our weapon. Can't move him though, so we probably want to move him into the path so this guy can't get reached very easily. I can close the distance right away, put him in melee, but then uh, this man is going to be able to get a free hit off on us. So I'm going to move here, which isn't great. Um, I'm going to put up my shield. And then I'm going to put this man... Um, I don't want to engage in melee yet, because if we do that, we can't actually get a hit off, because it would take too much AP. His his two handed uh, attacks cost a lot of AP, so this one costs six, uh, six and six. They all cost six, actually. Well, isn't that easy? Anyway, I'm going to move... Uh, I'm going to leave him right here, actually. Maybe I'll... Yeah, I'll leave him right here. That way, um, if this guy decides to come over here, he won't be able to attack us right away. We will be able to get an attack off on him right away, because we can move in one step and then get a hit off. So he's going to attack. We put up the shield wall, so we've got a pretty high chance of dodging. So our Axeman is going to be able to get into melee right away. It's kind of risky doing this, but we're going to take the 60% chance and cut off his bloody head. Great. That's exactly what I wanted to see. <laughs> That's a good start to this campaign. All right, I'm going to try a shot on this man. 60%. Unfortunately, we missed. We can't reload because I moved slightly. In fact, I'm going to move even further since we can. We already uh, used our stuff anyway. I'm going to go for, let's see, this costs four. I'm going to go for a hit, and then I'm going to go for a another shield wall. Because he can't currently attack anyone else except for him, unless he wants to take an attack of opportunity, but he doesn't. I'm going to reload, take a shot, another 60% chance, and we killed him. Well, wow, isn't that great? Good, good stuff. Um, that was a perfect round. We didn't take any any hits or anything like that, so that's pretty good. So you can see the damage we've dealt. So Yost did 29, Rambert did 43, and Kunal did 109. Got shared experience. None of them take any damage. Took any damage, which is pretty good. Got some gear. That is a pretty good piece of armor right there. Wow. Didn't get anything useful besides that. A wound stick isn't a particularly uh, effective weapon, but the blotched gambeson is actually really strong. We're going to take both of those items, though, and we're going to leave... The aftermath. You're alive. You won. The adrenaline fades and in its wake you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow's shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for a breath, everything blurs. The company's been devastated, cut down to but a few men, and that bastard hogger did justice to his name, fleeing like the weasel he is. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. It's Rambert, who sits down beside you, bending his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Bernard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader, but all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Kunal joins the two of you, still breathing heavily, then Yost. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the man a good burial and return to Meyerwick to collect our pay. The Weasel's men are slain, after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see to that wound before we lose you too. Wouldn't want to leave Kunal in charge, right? So be it. Right, so now we are on the campaign map. Uh, the campaign map is completely randomly generated, so if you play the game yourself, you will not see this map. You will see something completely different. Um, so we can see already there's a bunch of flags around the place. These are different factions. Um, it looks like whoever this is, I think, R? Yes, faction in relation. So uh, House Hedden are uh, very, uh, very much around where the place where we are currently at right now. But let's go back, actually, let's do that, um, to our character or our band, I should say. 
You can see our crowns, our provisions, our tools and supplies, our ammunition, and our medical supplies. Luckily, we don't need any of those yet. But before we move on, I'm going to go ahead and rename these characters that we currently have. And we're going to go through some of their stuff as well. I'm going to re-give uh, out equipment, and then we'll move on from there. Alright, I have given out the different pieces of gear to different people. Uh, readjusted some of the gear that I had given out. So, Wang the Magnificent is our spear-wielding man. Um, and good he is. He's uh, fairly good at his melee skill. Uh, he's got a decent amount of HP. He's also got some stars. Uh, this basically means that every time you level up, you have a higher chance of getting something good, I believe, uh, for the things that you have stars in. They're more, like, sufficient or... No, that's not the right word. They're more likely to get better at those skills that they have stars on. So you can see different people have different skills. Uh, it's very good that our ranged character, for example, has the ranged skill. But anyway... So Magnum is Magnificent, he also has Iron Lungs, which gives him plus 5 fatigue recovery per turn, which is quite good. Currently, Dissatisfied Morale is the same for all these guys, because they just lost most of the company. But they also won a battle, which means it went up slightly. Tom the Bard has Short Sighted, so he has minus 1 vision, which is unfortunate, uh, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I've also given him the Fangshire, which is a special item that you get for buying the Supporters edition of the game. Uh, it's a pretty good helmet, has 60 durability. Loses minus 5 maximum fatigue though, but it allows the wearer to see at night and negates any penalties due to nighttime. Normally during nighttime you have a lower chance to hit and things like that, but this negates that, which is pretty good. Um, but yes, sh short side doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, it, this is more important for ranged characters than it is for melee characters. And finally Simba the Lion has the survivor that we just saw already. Uh, has a good chance of surviving even if he takes uh, a big hit. And he's our archer. I've also given him the wooden stick because the wooden stick allows you to uh, stun or knock out. So if he ever gets caught in melee, he can then switch to his wooden stick, knock out the opponent or attempt to, and then walk away from them. Because if otherwise you try to walk away while you're in melee, the th enemy gets an attack of opportunity. And if they succeed, you don't even walk out of there, I think. You just still get stuck in there. Um, I could go over all these skills, but basically it's very... It, well, it's not simple, but essentially... Um, your armor pieces are an extension of your health. This is your hit points. Obviously, they go down, you die. Um, body armor and head armor is an extension of that, but not like a hundred percent. Like it's not like we have forty-three more health because there's of course armor penetration as well. Um, but basically, that's how it works. You got your action points. This is the same for every character. I'm sure there are some things that could change. I'm not entirely sure, but either way, everyone starts with nine. Uh, your fatigue, so this builds up. You can't do anything anymore, but it goes down again over time. Um, morale speaks for itself. If you have higher morale, you have a higher melee attack me or chance to hit, etc. Melee skill. If it goes down, you have reduced stats. Resolve um, basically means how well you react to, react to morale uh, trigger checks. Your initiative, when you attack or when you get to attack. Melee skill, range skill, they speak for themselves. Higher chance to hit, the higher they are. Melee defense, range defense, also similar but for defense. And then your damage is determined, uh, same as your effectiveness against armor and chance to hit the head are different depending on which weapon you use. And then our vision, like I said, this is mostly important for ranged characters, it gives them a higher um, range, literally. Anyway, now that that's all done, let us make our way to Meyerwick. Oh, there we go, that's kind of weird. And turn in our quest to return to Meyerwick. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive in Meyerwick. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down on their luck. The man who hired the company days ago, Albrecht the Burgermeister, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Still, he welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze as an elderly man with shaky hands tends to your wounds. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Albert de Burgermeister sits beside you and asks you if you took care of Hogart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades in the end. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod and he does so. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire. Flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Albert de Burgermeister hands you a goblet of wine. You did well, Stelsort. The brigands have been removed, though it is a shame that Hogart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Albrecht the Burgermeister gasps. Well, naturally, 400 crowns is agreed upon. He gestures toward a servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hogart once and for all. And I would pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say? Tom the Bart scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Wang the Magnificent stands to speak. 
Yes, the company's in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the band of donkeys, Tom the Bard would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And same with the lion. By the gods, we all know he'd got chasing the women of folk until one stove his rotted head in. We need the band of donkeys. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Tom the Bard burps and raises his cup to you. Sim of the Lion playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard, hug it or not. It's up to you, Captain. Right, so we basically have the option to continue our tutorial type mission, which gives us another 400 crowns, which is not bad at all. Or we can uh, find our fortune elsewhere, but we are going to continue. Albrecht the Burgermeister claps his hand in, hands in satisfaction. Excellent! My little birds will need some time to find where Hoggart is hiding his hide now. In the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end, end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. As you leave Elbrick, the Burgermeister's house, and stand on the out outskirts of Meyerwick, Wang the Magnificent seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back in there, it, back there, but bravado won't do shite. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find three good men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this Bodung's town got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Salzburg in the west. Them city folk aren't as, always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with ex fighting experience stopping to rest there. And that's what we shall do. But first, into Meyerwick we go. Let's see if there's anyone for hire here. There are indeed some men. We've got ourselves a beggar, a fisherman, another beggar, two more fishermen, and that is it. Okay. Well... Um, I think we're going to go ahead and try and hire some of these fishermen. They usually have higher fatigue because they're used to physical labor. Beggars are not the most useful men to hire right away. So let's see, Hubert. Uh, let's have a look at Hubert, see if he's got anything useful. He is gluttonous, tasty, let's have another one. So this basically means he eats more provisions and he's more likely to leave you if you run out of provisions. And he's disloyal, uh, which means that he... We'll be fast to leave if we ever run out of crowns or provisions. Well, the moment we run out of provisions, this guy is gone. That's good to know. Let's hire another fisherman, because obviously that one was a good one. Um, we're going to get Ludolf. Let's see if Ludolf's any better. Ludolf has, or is fragile, which means he has minus 10 hit points. That's unfortunate, but it does mean we'll probably just put him on the back line. He's got an okay melee skill. Actually, that's pretty poor, in all fairness. This guy's got 52, but he's more like to become good at ranged skill, unfortunately. Would have been better if, if he had that in melee skill. You can see his uh, fatigue 101 is ex exceptionally high. Um, so yeah, this guy will probably be at the back line. We'll put him there for now. And this guy will be at the front. Uh, even though he's not amazing, but that's okay. And I could hire Bernard as well. Or I could look in the other town and see if there's anyone better to hire there. So I think we might go ahead and do that. I'll have a look at the marketplace first, though, before we leave. See if there's anything useful you can buy here. Alright, I have purchased... Uh, a little bit of equipment. There's not a whole lot here, unfortunately. So uh, I bought some shields and some hoods and a bit of uh, thick armor, or thick tunic even. Uh, we got Johnny the Pasta now, our newly uh, acquired melee guy, who's uh, very likely to leave us, unfortunately. And we have Odd Job the Hatter, who is going to be our pike type unit. He's going to get a pitchfork. Unfortunately, there's no pitchfork to buy currently in this location. I'm also going to sell. Uh, some of these equipment pieces. I bought some wooden shields as well, because we're likely to get another frontline fighter as well. Uh, but yeah, no spears to buy here, no pitchforks to buy here. A little unlucky with the equipment, but it's okay. Um, we are going to leave this location, though, and travel to wherever you're supposed to travel, which is Salzbruck. Along the way, as Salzbruck's skyline appears on the horizon, Sim of the Lion seeks a word with you. Never been to Salzbruck before, but I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods, as all these prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need, too. Keep an eye out for bargains, and don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Tom the Bart sees fit to add his own opinion of what sh you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down on his luck more than a good pint. Gods know we earned it. Sim of the Lions shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. I'll keep it in mind. Alright, we've arrived at Salzburg with that. There's a very villagers. This is interesting. Uh, fewer potential recruits are to be found on the streets, and people deal less favorably with strangers. That is unfortunate, so we'll probably have to pay extra, and there won't be as many people to hire here. There is a gambler as well as a messenger. I think we're going to go ahead and hire this messenger and see if he's got anything useful. 
Our messenger is faint-hearted, which lowers his resolve by 5, and he is bright, so he's an extra experience gain. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, the faint-hearted, not so much. Um, makes me want to put him on the back line as well. He's actually not a terrible archer. 41 is nothing terrible. This guy's actually really good at ranged, but he's one of the companions, so we're not going to make him an archer. Um, I'll put him on the front line for now, though. We need to get him some gear, too. We already have 20, so don't really need that. Um, we'll rename in a moment, him in a moment as well. I could hire an Ejnar as well, but first we should probably see about buying some more gear. Ben the Heretic has made his way into our company. Um, I didn't buy a whole lot of gear. I bought a spear and I bought our pitchfork. Unfortunately, we have to pay some very expensive prices here. For one, it is a large city, and two, um, of course, because of the disappearing villagers, they are not as likely to talk to us. We can go to the weaponsmith and buy more equipment here, but the things here are going to be super expensive uh, and very high tier, which is good, of course, but we can't really afford anything like this, so we're not going to do that. I will, however, sell these items, actually. We still have a fair bit of money, so I'm going to, before we head over back to where we are supposed to go, I'm going to go to a different town. Uh, unfortunately, this is pretty far away. Is there anything closer over here? Hohenturm is... Probably a little further. We're going to go to Harkenstadt and see if there's anything or any more men we can hire. Probably not, though. But I am more interested in buying a little bit more equipment. We kind of want another spear, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at that. Alright, we've made it to Harkenstadt. Nothing bad going on here. At least that helps. There's a ton of people we can hire here. Interesting. I'm not sure if there's anyone I want to hire. A cultist. That's interesting. Another, uh, or a vagabond. Another messenger. Um, a servant. Often not used to hard physical labor. Yeah, I can only imagine. Flagellant fisherman. Oh my god, there's a freaking bastard here who's uh, quite decked out. Unfortunately, we can't quite afford him. Another flagellant. Flagellants are cheap, it seems. These guys are only 90, this one's 60. Not a servant. But for now, I think we're more interested in actually buying gear. Um, we can indeed buy some good uh, equipment here. Ben the Heretic now has a Militia Spear as well, but uh, I think with the remaining money that we have, I am tempted to recruit another man, because we can recruit quite a few men here. I think getting an extra one in there is definitely something that we could uh, consider doing. We can get another Fisherman, we could get a, a Servant or a fl I'm not too bothered about the Flagellants. Messengers aren't terrible, possibly. Um, a Vagabond, used to long travels but don't excel in anything in particular. Not really too interested. Um, in that. But this should be a little too expensive for us right now. So yeah, either another fisherman... Actually, do we have... Yeah, it was fishermen that we recruited, didn't we? Oh, actually, I went to the wrong menu there. I believe most of these guys are fishermen, yeah. Um, we'll, um, we'll hire another messenger then. This guy's a little cheaper. His upkeep is a little cheaper as well, I believe. Yeah, it's from uh, 8 to 7. So, Aegon, let's see. Are you terrible or nay? You are a drunkard, which increases your damage... By 10%, which is not bad. Uh, plus 5 resolve, but minus 5 melee skill, minus 10 range skill. Okay, so he's going to be a melee character. Not a particularly good one, but he will be one nonetheless. Alright, we have Chico the Banana, who's also outfitted with a Militia Spear and a Wooden Shield. The reason I go for the Militia Spears early on is because they have a very high chance to hit. So early on in the campaign, or in the game even, it's quite useful to have weapons that can hit easily, because of course my men aren't the best just yet. Um, but anyway... Man, he has incredibly high melee and range defense uh, like possibilities, which is pretty good. Anyway, um, I think we're as decked out as we can possibly be. We, we did spend most of our money. In fact, we are quite broke. I didn't realize how broke I was just now. So let's get a move on, and um, hopefully we can finish this quest soon so we can get some of our money back and then start making a living from there. Because right now, we, we are a little too broke for comfort. Unfinished business. Albrecht the Burgermeister is pacing back and forth when you find him. The healer who damn near killed you with his fire poke is standing nearby. He's picking chunk chunks of dry blood out of his fingernails. Albrecht the Burgermeister claps his hands. Finally, you're here. I have good news. We got hold of one of Hoggart's former men. My good friend here had a nice little talk with the man, and now I know where Hoggart's licking his wounds. The healer clears his throat, splaying his fingers out like a maiden looking to paint them. He speaks as though he's identifying a disease he's about to excise. The brigand known as Hoggard is hiding in a small hut on the plains to the north of here. Based upon my most civil discussion with one of his men, Hoggard knows the band of donkeys is on his heels and will have gathered more men since the last time you met him. Nodding, Albrecht the Burgermeister waves you off. Good luck, Selsort. We'll return with his head. 
All right. Well, it's currently nighttime, so there's not a whole lot to do here. We are going to go to Hoggard's Refuge. And we will reach there in about the morning, which is good. We don't want to be fighting during the night. Let's make sure we don't actually go in there at dawn. I think dawn is okay, actually, but there you go, morning. Let's do it during the morning. A few brigand fucks and a brigand poacher. Let's engage them. We have a pretty strong band. We're supposed to hire six, we hired seven. Because I'm absolutely mental like that. Oh my god. Well, that is a good start. <laughs> we immediately took a shot. Great. Luckily, well, actually, they're not luckily. They've got two, yeah, they've got two guys with shields. Uh, sorry, with uh, two hundred axes. But luckily, one of them is unarmored. I was going to say that's still very dangerous, though. I don't like that at all. We're currently uh, too far to actually be able to fire at them, so we're just going to wait. Uh, wait with you two. We did start with very high morale on some of these units, which is pretty good. I'm going to move up a couple steps. This brush. We can't actually move into the brush, which is unfortunate. We're going to move up a couple steps. This is very dangerous because this guy is already very dead. Unfortunately, but that is the way it is. We're just going to sit there and wait for the enemy to show up towards us. Uh, I'm going to move him. If I move him there, the Axeman won't be able to actually get a hit off on us. But I think I should still hold off anyway. Just not run up there too quickly. We could probably go into Spear Wall, move him up there. And skip his turn. Yeah, they're just going to sit there for now, but hopefully they will come towards us soon. I'm going to move you up uh, to here, because that guy won't still be able to attack us if he walks into our range. Or maybe he can, I'm not sure. Maybe once. That'll be okay. Um, Archer, or Crossbowman. I can actually go up here and probably have a pretty good shot because of our uh, height advantage. But if I move up, we will more likely be able to find... Uh, there's a bush in the way too. Yeah, let's just go up here and just see if we can hit the guy who's naked. If we hit him, we'll like to do a ton of damage. Unfortunately, we did not hit him. Shield wall up by Hoggarts. We're going to move these, this man up a little bit into uh, range. And end his turn. All right, I could go into spear wall. In fact, I think I will go ahead and do that. It's uh, quite fatigue intensive, but it might be good enough anyway. You can't do it, unfortunately. All right, so there, once again, sitting back. The archers gets his first turn. Please don't kill my guy right away. Oh my word, we are getting... Incredibly unlucky right there. <laughs> that is um, that's something special, that. Let's hope he doesn't run into melee, because I need to get him out of there. Oh my god, he got a stun off as well. We are getting some incredibly unlucky things happening to us right here. This is uh, this is not fun. Um, I'm going to move him... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep him here. We'll wait. Alright, we need to reload with you. I think I need to move him out of there and somehow... Not get him caught in melee. All right, can we get a hit here, please? There we go. That's a good hit, at least. We took a big chunk of health from him. Other axe guy moves into melee on the guy who didn't have a spear wall up, unfortunately. We have to start poking him right away. Oh, that's 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 good. Quite happy with that. Another spear wall up, or a shield wall up, even. All right, so I can't run into range here. He's stunned, so he won't be able to do much. If I do that, though, if I go here, there's a good chance we could finish him off right away, which is probably quite useful. But he's the one who's almost dead, and I'm actually tempted to just run him into this brush and keep him out of the fight. Make sure Johnny doesn't die in his first fight. Man, he got unlucky. Two hits on a guy with a shield. He did do aim shots, but even then, that's unlucky. Alright, so you're gonna walk up here. Actually, this guy isn't gonna get his turn anymore. He already killed someone, right? So you're gonna move up here, and hopefully we can kill this guy in a single hit. There we go. Reduces Hogwarts morale even further. And we're gonna try and help him out here. Get a hit. Unfortunately, didn't do any wounding or injuries. He skipped his turn. We can get another hit in right here as well, another chance to hit anyway, but we missed, unfortunately. Get another reload. And firing at him is kind of a bad idea. Let's see if we can get lucky. And we can! Oh my god, we killed him in a single hit. Hoggart's running, though, which isn't good. We need to chase, we need to get into melee with him so he doesn't get a chance to run away. Um. We're going to get a turn... Actually, we're not going to get a turn on him before, unfortunately. But I'm still going to run him over here. Hoggard, you can't run again, man. This is not... this. You can't just keep doing this to us. Uh, he doesn't get an attack, unfortunately. Right, you need to smash this man to death if you can. Good, good. I guess I'll run him into melee too. I don't really want him to be in melee. Because he's not the type of guy you want in melee against someone. But he's running, so surely he would just get free hits off on him. Let's assume that is the case. I'm not sure if that works, because he is Holger. This is the quest. We're supposed to kill this man. Anyway. Um, should have given him the bandage, but okay. 
you are going to just... I mean, this is completely pointless, but you may as well just shield wall just in case. You never know. You're going to walk into melee too, and you actually can start slapping away. Ripped his ear. Pretty good stuff. Alright, so he's going to try and run now, I imagine. Yeah, he's trying to run. He's getting We're getting constant free hits. Enemy retreats. So we can basically choose to run him down or say it's over, and we can just leave. But obviously, we're going to be able to kill him, so let's run him down. Who do we want to give this kill to? <laughs> kind of him, but I'm, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to see if I can get a hit with Tom the Bard. Chop his head off. That'll raise the morale of our men. There we go. Look at that head go. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. All right. So Johnny the Pasta took some uh, some unfortunately large, well, light wounds, but he is essentially out. That's very unfortunate. We got hit twice on him, but then again, we got we didn't really take any damage besides that, so that went quite well. Pierce cheek, which uh, reduces his fatigue recovery, unfortunately, but yeah, he'll heal in, in about two days, so that's okay. Got some level ups on Tom the Bard and Simba the Lion. We got some loot too, some uh, a signet ring, which is good for selling. Some mushrooms, which are essentially food. Some ground grains, which are food. Some more crowns. Tools and supplies, not a whole lot, but that's okay. Another woodcutter's axe, which is good. So we can give another one, or we can, when we get another person, we might be able to give him a, uh, a two-handed axe. A bow, which is pretty decent as well, because bows are actually very expensive to buy in a store, so I'm okay with that. Don't really currently have anyone I want to give it to, but that's totally fine. And a wound shield, which is useful too. This is some pretty decent gear right there. Thank you, Hoggart, for providing it to me. To be. After the battle, Hoggart lies dead in the pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boot in his corpse and look to your men. For the company, for all the men who've fallen. Simba the lion spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastard's head and get back to Myrowick. Time to get paid. Alright, let's go ahead and go back and uh, turn this quest in, and I think we're gonna go ahead and end the episode there. The company returns to Myrowick as victors, their heads held much higher this time. The band of donkeys are not the size that they once were, but they're still a force to be reckoned with, as Hoggart learned in his final moments. You carry his head in the sack that you empty in front of Elbrick the Burgermeister's feet. He jumps back, but the healer quickly picks his head up, stares at it and nods. Elbrick the Burgermeister approaches the brigand's bloodied face and eyes it carefully. Yes, yes, that's his ugly muggle, right? Servants, pay this man this money. Coin in hand, you raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield, there shall stand our company. All through the realm, people will know the band of donkeys. The men cheer. Wang that Magnificent puts his hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. No matter where you lead us, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. Except for Johnny, who is extremely likely to flee. We gain 400 crowns. As brothers! Alright. That is going to be where I shall leave this first episode. So hope you guys enjoyed. I am very much enjoying playing this game right now. Um, <laughs> probably should put him over there for now. A little too weak, maybe, uh, to do battle. But anyway, we'll figure that all out next time. So until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day, and goodbye.